So I'm out here in my driveway, and um, this is where I'm painting my dining room chairs. I, uh, I sit out here because it's well ventilated, and I'm using oil paint, so it's important with oil paint to be well ventilated. It's pretty stinky. Um, so these are the dining room chairs that I bought on Craigslist right before Thanksgiving, and um, I think I paid $8 a piece for them, something silly crazy like that. Um, I love the shape of them. They're super comfy. Um, I really like this velvet, actually. I think, it's, I think this velvet is original, or actually maybe not. Um, but I like the velvet. It, it looks almost like mohair. It looks really a nice, really a nice velvet. Um, but it, it does need to be cleaned, so I've got to figure out how to clean it. Um, but I really like it. Anyway, um, obviously they were all this green color, and um, so I debated on what color to use for a very long time to paint these. Uh, I finally just ended up going to Home Depot and buying a, a little can of black and a little can of white with this Rust-Oleum oil. I knew I wanted to use oil paint on them because I think that this green paint is actually the factory finish. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's probably oil. Um, and oil just gives you such a nice sheen. It's so buttery and velvety. But this is what I used. I used um, Rust-Oleum um, flat white. And then I used the black in gloss. Obviously you can't see it because I dropped the can into the bucket. This is, I bought one of these empty cans at um, Home Depot for two, three dollars with a lid so that I could mix up those two cans um, into here and put a lid on it. <coughs> so in case I didn't, so I could obviously just keep it fresh. Um, so yeah, so I just mixed them one to one. Um, and this is the color it came out. I did the same thing on my closet doors in my bedroom, um, but I used an almond colored white and then the black, and I didn't mix it one to one, I mixed it more black, probably three parts black to one part white, anyway, or one part almond. Um, and my, and I used all high gloss, two cans of high gloss in, in the bedroom, and my um, cabinet doors are super glossy, it almost looks like lacquer, really pretty. Anyway, so I wanna show you real quick um, how I'm going about doing this. I initially thought that I would, this one's a little bit wet. <clears throat> I initially thought I was gonna take the welt off of the chairs on, on the inside here, and also on the back. Um, I did take the welt off the back of the first one. Um, and then I realized as I came around the front and painted around the front, I was really able to get a nice tight um, line there. And I was able to get into the uh, edge real close without taking the welt off. So the rest of them, I have not taken any of the welt off because it pulls up this fabric. Um, when you take the welt off, it's just glued on there. Um, and I thought, well, I'll just pull it off and then re-glue it. But it does, it does pull up this fabric and I didn't want to take the chance of ripping this velvet because I really like it. Um, the back fabric is different. Um, so I might actually change this back fabric to a cool patterned fabric that works with this one because the back fabric is not velvet and it's, it's okay. It's just a um, neutral colored fabric, but it's not great. So I'll do that. But anyway, I'm gonna show you real quick um, the back of the chair that I took the welt off of so you can see what that looks like. And then I will show you how close I get to the edge of here. And I'll show you basically at, you know, kind of the what speed I um, paint this so you can get an idea of how long it'll take you if you're thinking about painting some chairs and you need to go real close to fabric. <clears throat> so don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you the back of the other chair and then I will show you um, in action painting this so you can get an idea of what it, how long it takes. This is the back of the chair that I took the welt off of. Um, you can see there's no welt around the edges. I did not take it off at the bottom because once I started ripping it off on the sides, it was starting to um, tear into the fabric. So now what I'll do is I'll just cut off these edges and re-staple it and then re-glue the double welt on here. But after I did that one, and then I painted around the bottom there, and then I painted up around this uh, velvet, and I was able to get a really good close line on that. So you can't even see any of the green paint, and I didn't get any on the velvet. So I was just really careful with a small artist brush. Oh, see right there, you can see a little bit of the green there, but when you back up, totally not, totally not visible. You would never notice that if you weren't looking for it. So anyway, that's how close I was able to get um, painting around the velvet double welt. So you don't need to take that off. So anyway, now I'll take you back outside and we'll, I'll show you exactly um, the pace that I was able to paint without getting paint on the uh, well. Okay, so I'm back outside and I'm gonna show you um, a couple little tricks that I did. I used this um, spackling knife, I think it's for drywall, um, 
and I tucked that into the side here in order to paint this edge. So this way I'm able to paint that without getting any paint on the seat. And this paint actually dries pretty quickly. I sort of expected it to take longer to dry, but it dries fairly quickly. So just have my can of paint here. And this is the brush. It's an artist brush um, from Michael's Craft Warehouse. And um, it's just a, probably like a number two grade brush, but it's got natural bristles that are real soft. And it's um, a filbert so that it gets real thin at the tip. And that's what allows me to get in nice and close to the, uh, to the welt without getting paint on the welt. So that's a really, a, having a, real, a, a good brush is pretty important because um, you don't wanna have bristles falling out of your brush. And it just, it just makes all the difference having a good brush. Um, it doesn't bend over. If you have a cheap brush, they just bend over on you. And um, it's just not, just buy a decent brush, you know, number two artist brush or something like that. So that's that. I'm going to pull this in a little tighter so that you can see how I paint around the, uh, the welt. All right. So here I'm in a little tighter, closer to the welt so you can see um, the rate or the pace that I'm painting this so you can get an idea of how long it takes. It really is probably about 15 to maybe 30 minutes per chair, even though it's this little tiny brush. Um, it doesn't really take all that long. And so I try to get just um, paint on the tip of my brush and then kind of dab it in there so I can get just the tip of my brush in to the, you know, the thin space between the welt and the chair. The reason why I do it this way is because obviously the tip of the brush is the skinniest. Um, can you see that? The brush is fat and obviously it gets thinner at the tip. So that thin tip is what you want to kind of push into that space. I'm trying to do it like this, it's a little bit more difficult, although you can do it. And I do that um, around the top. Is I do that. Um, another thing about this is you want to be careful to not put too much paint on on the one coat, on the first coat, um, because you'll get drips and um, sagging. Um, and you don't want that, obviously. You want to have a nice, um, smooth finish with no sags. So it's a real thin line with oil paint, the difference between a good first coat and too much. It's very tempting with this to put on a thick coat because you, you can then get away with just doing one coat of paint, but don't be tempted to put on too much because you'll get sagging lines where the paint has just settled and you'll end up with lines in the, in the paint and you won't see it really until it's too dry to fix. So just don't be tempted to put it on too thick. You're better off putting on a light layer and coming back and doing a second coat. Um, because it's a thin line between just enough and too much. So it seems like with this little brush, it's gonna take me forever to do this. But like I said, it's, it's actually a pretty fast process. Okay, so I'm gonna show you around the top as well. So here I am at the top of the chair and I'll show you here. So I'm just using the same similar technique where I'm just kind of poking the thin tip of my brush kind of behind the welt. And then go back over it and smooth it out so you don't get those 
brush, the dabbing brush strokes. So if your fabric is very um, fibrous and there's a lot of loose fiber, this one is not, you could pull down the, pull this down, which reveals quite a bit more of the wood or the green, you know, the green paint here. So it's a good way to get real, get right behind there. So I'll bring you in close on this so you can see how much more that reveals. Okay, so there it is. And you just saw me paint that. And you can see how nice and tight that paint job is. There's no paint on the welt. And you see over here, if I grab this and pull it, it actually does open that up quite a bit more. And it will allow you to paint all the way down behind it. So, so that's the process. It's quite simple. So that's the process. It's pretty simple. I mean, it, it's actually been a lot easier than I expected um, to paint these chairs. I really thought it was going to be super difficult to get around all this welt, but it's actually been really quite easy. I've got two more chairs left to paint and I will um, put some uh, still pictures at the end of this post. So um, stick around for a couple more minutes and, and you'll see um, a couple still pictures of all the chairs together at my dining room table. Um, and um, comment below, let me know, would you buy green dining room chairs like this? Um, I really, I thought I was gonna have to strip all this off in order to paint them and change this bad color. Um, but it's, it's been super easy just to paint around it. So let me know what you think. Um, do you like the gray and um, the neutral? beige. I really like it. it. It looks good in my house, so I'm happy with it. So thanks for watching, you guys. It's Mimsy from MimsyandCompany.com. Make sure that you like and subscribe and check out the blog post, MimsyandCompany.com. Thanks for watching, you guys. See you next time. Bye.